Return of the Hat. What's up friends, Liron here, and I had a crazy idea. I thought to myself, hmm, I want to make another show on this channel. And what I decided is to actually do a daily, weekly, something like that show about paints. And what I'm gonna do is, in every episode, I'm gonna choose one paint, one of these cool paints that I've got here, and sort of show it, or show it, demonstrate it, talk a bit about it, talk about some nerdy stuff like uh, what composes it, what's inside this tube, um, and it's just gonna be a blast. So let's get started with the first episode. In today's episode, we are looking at the French Ultramarine, and in this specific one, we'll be looking at the Daniel Smith's one. Um, the reason why is that just this is the one I have. I believe I also have a Windsor Newton Cotman one, which is a little cheaper, a little uh, simpler, but we'll look at this one today. So, French Ultramarine is a beautiful sort of reddish blue, and I personally love it. I use it for many things, as I will talk about in a few moments. Um, so we have a Daniel Smith tube and now we're gonna look at some nerd stats. So the pigment is PB29 and this is actually the pigment for uh, French Ultramarine. So if you look at the tube, you can see here up close, here you can see PB29 and it's the only uh, pigment mentioned here, meaning this is a pure, used only with PB29. Now usually you want to choose, I think, pure pigments, meaning there aren't too many mixtures. So if you look at, um, I believe, other other types of blues, like with weird names, like I think cyanan blue, something like that, has cobalt blue in it and has French ultramarine, it's like a mixture. And so it's okay that it's a mix, but think about it this way, if you're gonna mix it with other paints, things may get muddy. But um, as a side note, for example, there are greens and earth tones that include a lot, a lot, a lot of mixes in them, which is quite natural actually. It's called convenience mixes, I think. Um, and you will see this here. If you examine this, you'll see many other pigments mentioned. Focus. Good. Okay, so you can see many other pigments mentioned, unlike this one that only has the PB29. Now, P stands for pigment, B stands for blue, there's PY, P yellow, PO, P orange, stuff like that. The first episode is gonna be a little longer because I'm gonna explain some more stuff, okay? But as we go along and we sort of learn how to better understand each terminology and each nerd stat, it's gonna be a little shorter. Next up on our nerd stats is the series. So it says series two, and you can see it here. Um, actually, there's series two and light fastness one. So we're gonna cover both of them. Series basically means how expensive the paint is. And the higher the series, the more expensive it is. So two is relatively cheap. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's six series. There could be more, I'm not sure. Never saw any paint above um, series six. So who knows? But um, this one's pretty cheap and it doesn't mean anything about the quality. So if you have a series six pigment, doesn't mean it's a good quality. And if you have a series two pigment, doesn't mean it's, it's bad quality, okay? So it's important to understand because some pigments are more expensive to produce and some of it is just marketing tactic because the color has this exotic name, so they give it a higher series. I'm not sure, don't wanna blame anyone, but I heard that's what happens sometimes, but anyway. So this is a series two. Now light fastness. Um, this basically is a fancy word to say how resistant the paint is to light, AKA will it change over time with exposure? So some colors are, some pigments are known as fugitive um, pigments, or I'm not even sure if it's the pigment itself or just the mixture, but it's a fugitive one. For example, alizarin crimson kind of uh, dies out on you, it fades away, becomes a little bland, a little loses its, um, it even can change over time. Now, uh, with the light fastness, there is the ASTM scale from one to five, and the thing is one is the best. So this one is number one, and it's really good. It's not gonna change over time. It can hold, I don't know how many years, but a lot of years, maybe a hundred, maybe two, maybe a century, maybe, I don't know, century is hundred. Uh, <laughs> So this is the ASTM scale, number one, it's excellent. 
And basically, uh, in other words, it's like the chemical stability, if you really want to know uh, what it means. As long as the, the more stable the chemical is, the more it's going to stay the same. Okay. Now, um, there's the pigment color code. That's, that's like if you're an uber nerd. So you can see here, uh, there's the 7707 CL. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, there's different codes for different materials that it's used for. So I did check for you because I was unsure of it. And 77000 until 77999 is composed of inorganic um, mixture, which is good because it's like, ew. <laughs> and some, some others are, could be organic, could be synthetic, could be some other things. This is totally like, I don't care about it personally. Uh, I don't think it matters so much. As a perfectionist nerd, I just forgot to mention that this paint will granulate, meaning you'll get this beautiful texture on the paper, and also that it is transparent. As you probably can see, it's really, it just stays uh, very, very light. You can see through it. I love it. Love this paint. Uh, this is it for the nerd stats. Now let's talk a bit about what I use it for. So I use this one extensively, actually, and this is why I wanted to start with it. It's actually a really good uh, beginner color, and this is why I also recommend the primary uh, primary set of Daniel Smith, because it's one of them, and it just mixes really well with other paints. So what I like to use it for is mainly uh, for skies and for um, water, stuff like that, and this is the first use. Now, the second one that I like a lot is actually mixing darker values uh, with burnt sienna and sepia. Um, what, what other ones you can use with it? I don't know. These are the main ones. So you can really get the paint to be gray and also uh, to be dark, sorry, and also gray. So it also neutralizes each other really well. Um, so this is the second use. And another one is that it just works well with the color scheme that I like to use. Uh, which is, I like the sap green, I like the sepia, I like the burnt sienna, and uh, this uh, French ultramarine just looks really good um, together. And I have quite a few videos, I think. One of them is the Lonely Barn, which I'm going to link, I think, here, um, which is uh, just uses this mixture really well. Okay, so I think this is it. We've covered everything. Uh, woo! First episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna break my paints. Um, so let me know what you think about uh, this kind of show and if you want me to continue because I have tons of tubes and I can just keep going, you know, I can just make more and more. I don't need to think about it. All I need to do is grab a random tube and do it. So let me know what you think. Um, if you enjoyed this one, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you'll get notifications for more awesome videos. And also don't forget to follow me on Snapchat and Instagram where I share tons of my processes and how I draw and share personal stuff and personal advice. So you want to be there. Anyway, this is it. Have an amazing day. I'll see you soon.